In this problem, we're told that the car slows down uniformly, meaning that there is constant acceleration. And if there's constant acceleration, then we can use our kinematics equations that we want to use in cases where there's constant acceleration. So I've written out those three equations in this little box. And remember that the method we use is that we want to pick the equation that has the variable we're trying to solve for and the variables that we have. So the variable we're being asked to solve for is how far the car traveled. So that's delta x. Delta x is our unknown that we were looking for. We're also told that the car is slowing down from a speed of 28 meters per second. So the initial speed v naught is 28 meters per second. And it's slowing down to rest. So the final speed is zero. We're also told that this happens over the course of 8 seconds. So time t is equal to 8 seconds. Now ideally, this is the part where we find the equation that has all four of these variables. But if we look at the three equations I've written on the left, we can see that none of these equations have all four of these variables. Even though the three equations I wrote are kind of like the big three that you can always use in any problem, it's not always a one-step process. In the case of this problem, for example, you'll have to, if you want to use those three equations and nothing else, you'll have to use one of the equations to maybe find a different variable and work from there. For example, you could probably use the first equation to solve for the acceleration, and then once you have the acceleration, use one of the other equations to find delta x. Probably the third one. But it is often helpful to recognize that there are technically more equations at our disposal than just the ones we have. It's not always as useful to memorize them, but if you look at any physics textbook, you might find other variations of these equations that you can use in other cases. And one of these lesser known equations tells us that if the acceleration is constant, then the change in position is equal to the sum of the initial and final speeds divided by 2 multiplied by the time. So let's take this equation and plug in our values. So the initial speed is 28 meters per second, plus the final speed of zero, divided by two, all multiplied by the time interval of eight seconds. If we put this into a calculator, then we find a change in position of 112 meters. And that is the answer to this problem. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.